but I just want to share some things about, about the modes because normal law, unlike the rest of the laws, has different modes, ground, flight, flare. And we're going to talk now about each one of those in detail. So the, the ground mode in normal law, as you can imagine, is active on the ground. Uh, and wh what exactly is that and why do I need a ground mode? One of the, n the notable things about ground mode is the fact that the side stick relationship is direct. So I want to talk to you now about the side stick for a second and the relationship of what is direct versus G load versus roll rate and this whole thing is going to tie right back into why we need it in the various modes from ground to flight to flare. For any of you that have flown anything other than an Airbus, which is all of you, because at some point I'm sure you flew a, a 172 or a Piper Warrior or something to that effect, you're probably well aware of the fact that when you grab that control column or that yoke and you pull aft on it, there's probably a cable or a pulley system that's moving the elevator or the aileron or the rudder proportionate to your rudder or your elevator or aileron input. And so just to give you uh, some, some paralleling to this, like even in the Boeing, for example, if I move the column 50% deflection aft elevator input, effectively now my elevator is going to move proportionate to the deflection of the control column, which is 50%. That's not necessarily true in the 320 or in, the, in an Airbus product because we do have something called, of course, an elevator aileron computer. And your side stick, which is what this horrible drawing is right here. I have a great side stick right here, actually, which is a model from Ben. Thank you, Ben. I'm putting it to good use. So the side stick here, when I pull the side stick, okay, or I push it or I roll with it or I do whatever I do, I'm actually sending a command to an elevator aileron computer and namely ELAC2 because ELAC2 is the primary driver of the elevator. Uh, that's somewhat relevant and important uh, because ELAC1 can also, yes, provide pitch control via the elevator, but it only has authority through the blue hydraulic system to run the elevator, contrary to ELAC2, which has green and yellow authority on the elevator. And effectively, what I want to share with you here now is just to bring some clarity to this, is that my elevator is going to move proportionate to the command of the ELAC, which is not necessarily proportionate to the command of the side stick by means of displacement. Simply put, here's what that means, very simply put. If I take the side stick and I deflect it aft, say 50%, the ELAC takes that input and it interprets it as a positive G change request. So an aft input is a positive G change request, aka elevator nose up, and a forward input would be negative G change request, an elevator nose down. So the 50% aft input might, it, by the ELAC, be interpreted as I want a plus 1.25 G change, which may mean that the elevator, in order to give you this G change, needs to deflect a total of 30%. And so what you can see is that because there's this intermediary here that's converting an actual input to a G load command, the elevator may not actually move proportionate to the side stick. That's effectively what your G load is. Now your ailerons work the same way, uh, it's roll rate. And all of this, by the way, I just wanna share with you, can very much be demonstrated and validated in an airplane or better yet in a sim, I'm not saying go do this in the plane, but you could certainly get in, in, in the sim and just go level flight 5,000 feet, turn off all the automation, autopilot, everything, auto thrust, grab the thrust levers and just go to toga. Now, what you would expect in any other airplane is for the nose to very dramatically come up. You would expect a very dramatic nose up pitching tendency because ultimately the engines are mounted under the wing and any jet, this is a universal aerodynamic principle, when I apply thrust to an underwing mounted aircraft, uh, underwing uh, engine mounted aircraft, then you know, effectively that nose up tendency is gonna be pretty aggressive. And this is basically what we call uh, thrust vectoring is the formal term for this in aerodynamics. But the 320, what you're gonna notice in this example is that it actually doesn't pitch up very aggressively at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's pretty anticlimactic. It doesn't really do anything. It kind of just maybe pitches a little bit, but then it settles. And the reason it settles is because the, uh, the flight control computers are looking at your side stick and the side stick input is nothing. 
And so because I'm not commanding anything, the ELAC says you want no G change, meaning no, no positive, no negative G. I don't want any pitching moment, but aerodynamically the thrust is causing that nose up tendency. So then the ELAC says you don't want any, any G change and it actually begins applying input for you to not have the nose come up, which would be the natural tendency of the jet to bring the nose up if we didn't actually have uh, this G load roll rate flight control characteristic. So uh, this, by the way, poses a big challenge for people later that transition to Boeing and we do stall recoveries because you're so used to applying thrust in the recovery and not having a, a giant nose up tendency. And then all of a sudden people are getting secondary stick shakers in the Boeing because it doesn't have this magic of G load roll rate, right? And so why do I bring all this up? Well, because now we go back to the ground mode and remember the ground mode of normal law, as I was saying, one of the notable things about this is the fact that it's not G load roll rate at all. It's direct. Your in other words, if your side stick input here is a 50% deflection, then literally what the elevator moves is 50%. Now, why, why is that that way? And the reason it's that way really is two things. Uh, one, because I got to rotate the aircraft off the runway and I can't pull more than one G's on a two-dimensional playing field, which is on planet Earth, right? So the ELAC doesn't understand positive G's on the ground because it can't pull any more than one G on the ground. And so in order to rotate off and give me a nose-up elevator deflection, I need a direct communication between side stick and elevator, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing, of course, is I got to do a flight control check, which we do usually on the taxi out, full up, down, neutral, left, right, neutral. And the only way for the elevator motion to happen is if I have a direct communication. Now I'm going to share something about the flight control check. Be very um, mindful that your flight control check, you're looking at the flight controls page architecture, as Airbus puts it, when it pops up and you move that side stick because yes, you do have the crosshair on the attitude indicator that will move. The crosshair being there is also a tall tale sign that you're in ground mode because the crosshair disappears once we're airborne. We transition to flight mode, which we're going to look at. But the crosshair is tied to side stick input and it is not tied to flight control surface deflection. So even though you might see the crosshair moving on the attitude indicator, you may actually not have any surface movement at all from your elevator aileron uh, input. So when you do your full up down neutral calls, make sure you're looking at the actual systems display page and not necessarily only the attitude indicator. So that's ground mode. Hopefully that makes sense. And of course from ground mode, now we transition to flight mode. And flight mode is basically where the side stick characteristics change. And we go uh, from a direct communication to now suddenly the G load and the roll rate that you would expect in normal law in flight. The transition period is about five seconds. Uh, this is why the autopilot says don't engage it until approximately five seconds, 100 feet once we're airborne. It's going from ground mode to flight mode, as they like to call the blending. That blending process is the five second or 100 foot delay. And uh, in flight mode, like we just covered, I do very much have G load roll rate. The roll rate, similar to G load, is not a direct communication, but it's a command to roll the aircraft at a, a rate proportionate to whatever you're commanding. And so a full side stick deflection is effectively 15 degrees per second. And I would also like to say on this note, the fact that we do have something referred to as the algebraic summing of side stick inputs. So what that simply means uh, is that if, if I, let's say I'm the pilot flying, I grab the side stick and I pull aft, and then the pilot monitoring for whatever reason grabs the side stick and pushes forward, we're basically canceling each other out. And so the sum of that input is zero and the, and the jet will do nothing. It'll just continue flying straight and level. Same is true if one person goes full left or full right input and the other person goes full opposite input. The sum of both of those, of course, would be zero. Um, that's kind of an interesting, unique uh, design. Uh, I guess to some degree I like it, to some degree I don't. Uh, there's some questioning whether or not that was a contributing factor with Air France 447 because it was dark, nobody could see the input, so on and so forth. Yes, you can hear dual input. I get that. There's also, of course, the takeover push button that we can talk about. Um, so whether it's good or bad is neither here nor there. It's just something you should be mindful of that the sticks are summed, especially for those of you that are line check airmen or captains and you're you know, kind of monitoring your first officer as they come in to land and maybe you need to make a correction, be ready to hit the takeover push button because your input is going to be 
uh, added or summed up to whatever their input is, which could quickly bring you to a tail strike scenario if you're both putting an input that would yield that result, right? So just something to be mindful of. The last thing I'll share with you is that we have flare mode. We got flare mode and flare mode, uh, if you don't know, only available in normal law. Uh, basically the ELAC takes a snapshot of your pitch attitude on the approach and this is going to happen right at 50 feet. And as an example, I'm going to say your pitch attitude here is say a positive four degrees nose up. So plus four degrees nose up. Uh, it takes that picture right there and then at 30 degrees or 30 feet, I should say, at 30 feet, it begins applying a nose down pitching moment that you're going to counter with aft elevator input to make the landing flare seem natural and normal by comparison to any other jet you've landed. Now, why, why do we need this? So I want to turn your attention away from this for just a second and I want to say, think about any other airplane you have flown that is not an Airbus, any of them, anything, from a 172 to a 747 that is not an Airbus. If you look and think about your landing flare and you can just Google a YouTube video on cockpit 737 landing video and you're going to see the inputs that are being done on this column they're not one continuous aft input to a touchdown they're generally an aft input followed by a neutral input to an aft input to a neutral input and if you were to put a high-speed camera on the elevator back there right what you would see of course is the elevator deflecting nose up and then back to the neutral position nose up back to the neutral position up and down like this and so the reason you're having to continually apply this aft input is because you're of course trying to soften the landing because there's a natural tendency for the nose to want to come down as the elevator re returns back to the neutral position. Well, we just learned that the side stick is actually commanding G load. And if you don't have an input, that effectively means no pitch change. So then think about this for a second, right? If, you, if you're coming up to the, to the runway and you flare and you bring the nose up, and you're looking great and you bring the nose up and then you neutralize the side stick and you don't put any input anymore. The ELAC interprets the lack of input as no G change. Translation, do not change the pitch attitude. So the nose will stay right where it is and the elevator would actually still apply inputs to keep the nose right where it is. Even though you're not applying an input to the side stick, there would still be elevator motion technically on a small level to comply with your input or lack of input, right, which is no G change on the side stick. So that would lead to effectively like this endless floating scenario where the, where the jet's basically just hovering there. And so the only reason we have to continually add this aft elevator input is because the flare mode is effectively taking the nose, and I like to think of it as like almost a rubber band that's just compressing the nose down towards the runway. And as it brings the nose down, I have no other option but to continually apply my aft elevator inputs, which is natural to the sensation I would, I would have if I were landing any other airplane. So that's uh, one of the, the dominant reasons why we have that flare mode in normal law. Hopefully this makes sense. And with that, that uh, effectively covers the three different modes that we have. I don't see nothing in the chat. If you have questions, by all means, drop them in there uh, and, and we'll hopefully answer them as best as we can. In the meantime, we'll keep pressing through.